So the impeachment, Graham, have you been watching any of the impeachment? Um, you know, here and there, I like watching to see how the ruling class is distracting the masses. That's exactly right. Oh, wow. So they had the uh, hmm. the Judiciary Committee, uh, uh, Representative Nadler. He is the guy who's uh, running this hearing. The other guy was uh, Schiff. And uh, he was he was the that was the Intel committee, right? That, that was holding that. Now this is the judiciary. Doesn't matter really. None of this matters. Uh, which is why I barely pay attention to the impeachment. Um, and when I do, it's exactly what I think it's going to be. Uh, but when it was Schiff last the last two weeks, it was Schiff contro- controlling them. They if you turn on Fox News, they they could not high five themselves hard enough over saying, "Oh, what a Schiff show." All right. Oh, God. The Schiff show. Schiff, uh, uh, Sean Hannity must have said it 10 times in one segment. Schiff, what a Schiff show. All right. With your clever little. <laughs> oh, they loved it. Now, I can't wait till they come up with, for the Nadler. I can't wait. What are, what are they called Nadler? I don't know what they're going to call them, but oh, wow. Schiff, the Schiff show. Okay. Watch well, your nads. Yeah, yeah. It'll be something <laughs> like that. Boy, this would, uh, this investigation really gets you in the Go Nadler Boy. report. <laughs> Nadler, more like Nad less, am I right? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Wait, I don't get it. <laughs> Nadler lacks the balls to confront Trump. Anyway. <laughs> so um so here's what happened. So I just wanna I'm just gonna jump in real quick and show you how the Democrats are messing things up again. So they have so they the Democrats bring on four legal scholars, right? So these are le- these aren't people who have any inside information into impeachment or Ukraine or Burisma or or the Trump. And they have no insight, no nothing. They're just people who work at uh, law schools and stuff, right? And this is the guy. This is Jonathan Turley. We know him from CNN and MSNBC. He's always on there. Um. So this the this is their star witness here. Uh, this is another. Uh, by the way, this is how. So there's four witnesses, and this is how CNN was reporting it. Three legal experts testified Trump committed impeachable offenses. One expert dissents. That's how that's how they got it, right? So their star star was this Professor Pamela S. Carlin, right? And so, well, first of all, here's it sounds pretty bad. They both everybody was was sure Trump uh, was going to prison. Here we go. The evidence reveals a president who used the powers of his office to demand that a foreign government participate in undermining a competing candidate for the presidency. If we are to keep faith with our Constitution and with our republic, President Trump must be held to account. If Congress fails to impeach here, then the impeachment process has lost all meaning. I stand with the Constitution and I stand with the framers who are committed to ensure that no one is above the law. On the basis of the testimony and the evidence before the House, President Trump has committed impeachable high crimes and misdemeanors by corruptly abusing the office of the presidency. Okay, so that sounds that's all sounds really bad and damning. And by the way, that guy's voice reminds you of every person. I don't know, like he just has that. I went to Harvard accent. I don't know what yeah. that is in his voice, but it's in there. I don't even know if he went to Harvard. I'm just saying, but he's in there that, you know what I mean? I'm an Ivy Leaguer. There's like that silver spoon like, right yeah, in yeah. there. There's Whatever this... it is, I don't know. I feel like he's going to start telling me about really expensive scotch, <laughs> and I'm going to want some of it. Right? Yeah. Like, you you, you, you just, yeah. You, you could just see him being dropped off uh, at, at the summer camp, right? You could just see it. <laughs> With his sweater tied around, and uh, anyway, so so that's so now let's go to their start. To, so, like I said, that uh, Carlin was their star witness. Here she is; she's on a panel, uh, and there she is, right there. That's this is their star. You've been seeing her in the press, right? Their star witness, and so this is her on a panel talking about Donald Trump. Ready? From the airport yesterday, and I got off the bus from Dulles down at L'Enfant Plaza, and I walked up to the hotel, and as I was walking past what used to be the old post office building and is now the Trump Hotel, which I had to cross the street, of course. Um, but um, Are you staying there? God, no. This is your star witness, someone who is an obvious partisan against Donald Trump and who has publicly said so. You couldn't find a law professor who agreed that you should impeach Trump that didn't have this piece of tape out there, who wasn't an obvious Trump hater. Like, that's not just her not liking Trump's policies. That's her, like, being over the top. I had to cross the street from Trump's hotel. 
that, which is fine for her to have that feeling. Again, you can feel those things, whatever. But the Democrats, this is your star witness. That's pretty stupid. Right. Why can't how hard would it be to find a lawyer that's an that has that's an openly Republican conservative who's like who agrees with impeachment, who's like, no, the constant a constitutionalist, you know, a conservative Reagan era constitutionalist who's like, no, he's broken the law. He's broken Malian's clause on down the line. Get him out. Like so. So here. And, you know, I just want to say that I am I'm no fan of Donald Trump's. No, nor I. And hey, if you want to really be able to convince me to make the case to impeach him, go right ahead. Go ahead. I'm I'm all for it. But nobody's making the case for it. And it's just like you said, a distraction. Okay, so let's so there's even more. So now that same woman there starts this. You've seen her all over the news. So now here she is. She's uh, going to be asked about her political donations. Professor Carlin, you gave two thousand bucks, or you gave a thousand bucks to Elizabeth Warren, right? Uh, I believe so. She's currently a donor to Elizabeth Warren. She's a current donor to Elizabeth Warren. You gave twelve hundred uh, bucks to Barack Obama. I have no reason to question that. And you gave two thousand bucks to Hillary Clinton. That's correct. Professor Carlin, she donated to Hillary Clinton. She donated to Barack Obama. And she's currently donating to Elizabeth Warren. This is your star witness. Again, you couldn't find a nonpartisan. You couldn't find someone who doesn't donate to political candidates who's a constitutional lawyer. No, they couldn't do that. And then um, on that, do you remember saying the following? And then it gets worse. So, again, she crosses the street. She won't walk on the same side of the street in New York that Trump's hotel is. She donates to all his political opponents and has for years and currently is. And now she went on a podcast called Versus Trump. And what did she say about conservatives in general? This is what she said about conservatives in general. Liberals tend to cluster more. Conservatives, especially very conservative people, tend to spread out more, perhaps because they don't even want to be around themselves. Did you say that? Yes, I did. Again, I, you can she can say all of this stuff and n- none of these things that she's saying or doing are, are horrible or any. But it's super stupid of the Democrats that this is their legal scholar that they're going to present in front of the country. They don't have to convince the Democrats. They have to convince the independents yes. and some Republicans yes. to go along with them. That's the point of these hearings. You don't start a hearing if you don't already know all the evidence, which they do. And so to to highlight their evidence, they bring in us obvious partisan who has publicly said shitty things about not only Donald Trump, but Republicans and conservatives in general. This is and they go. She's so she's such a partisan. That and I'm not, there's nothing wrong with being partisan. I'm not saying she's a bad person. I'm saying this was a tactical, ridiculous move by the Democrats to make her their expert. And here, here's another reason why that's stupid, because she goes on to make. And now here's a joke. I'm sure she's she's told a lot, maybe in her law class or at her uh, her parties. Uh, in in at, at uh, Stanford. Here we go. Give you one example that shows you the difference between him and a king, which is the Constitution says there can be no titles of nobility. So while the president can name his son Baron, he can't make him a Baron. <laughs> so, do you see? And she's proud of her. So she's like, <clears throat> right? And you hear people giggling. So that's not the first time she's ever told that joke, right? Or whatever you want to call that. Which again doesn't bother me, but there's an un, there's a rule. I don't know if it's written or unwritten, but there's a rule. You're not allowed to go after politicians' kids. You're just not allowed until they're of an age of majority. Now, of course, people break that rule all the time. They did it with Chelsea Clinton. Uh, they uh, Rush Limbaugh famously did that. Put a picture of oh, there's the White House dog, and put a picture of her. That's horrible. And so what she just did was invoke Baron Trump, who's 12, I think, in making a point that's really slamming on Trump because you could see she's proud of him. And people laughed. And apparently that's not okay. So that's not okay. And she should know that's not okay. If she's such a smarty pants and she's such a better person than Donald Trump 
and conservatives in general, then she should know better. She shouldn't then become exactly like the thing she's claiming to be better than. So that was uh, so that got called out before she was done testifying. People were going nuts about that. So then she decided she should apologize for it before she was done testifying. It got back to her. You better te- you better apologize for this. And watch how she apologizes. Watch this. Well, first of all, first of all, this gives this gives uh, Sean Hannity. This gives him the ability to Case do this. Case in point, at today's hearings, she made a pretty dis- disgusting, repulsive joke about the president and Melania Trump's third. Repulsive, disgusting. <laughs> no, I don't think it was repulsive or disgusting. <laughs> and it's fun to see these, sa- these same guys who call everybody else snowflakes exactly. <laughs> turn into the biggest snowflake in the world. John Hannity, again, uh, just goes to sweet. show you that John, John Hannity, Rachel Madden, they're all the same. They have situational integrity yes. and outrage. Yeah. They have situational outrage, right? Because nine times out of ten, Sean, Sean Hannity's going to call you a snowflake if you get upset at a joke. But uh, now it's it serves his political purposes, so he's going to be it. So, so what she just did was hand Sean Hannity uh, a gift because now he can pretend to be outraged, and rightly so. Can I see it again? So him? Yeah. Case in point, at today's hearings, she made a pretty dis- disgusting, repulsive oh, joke. Okay. Because <laughs> if someone made, a, 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 oh, uh, everyone's too PC I, now. That's the exactly right. The liberals have made everyone, you can't make a joke right. anymore. A- AOC wants to outlaw jokes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but what, but uh, you are correct. We're all correct in ripping on Sean. But he gets away with this because she did what she did. Yeah. So now... So what again? They're handing gifts. If this is the Democrats trying to beat up on the Republican, they're handing them gifts. And so now it gets back to her that she has to apologize and watch how she apologizes. I want to apologize for uh, what I said earlier about the president's son. It was wrong of me to do that. I wish the president would apologize, obviously, for the things that he's done that's wrong. But I do regret having. That's not how you apologize. That's how a 12 year old apologizes when they're forced to apologize. In fact, your apology reveals you to have less character. So what you apologize when you do that, it's because you have character and you can own what you did wrong. What she's doing is not owning what she did. What she's doing is I shouldn't have done that. But the president's even what that's how a 12 year old. So this is the people who have more character than Trump revealing that they don't. First, she makes the joke, and then when she's called on her to apologize, she does it in the shittiest way possible. That's not somebody who has more character. If that, that, which, which is, by the way, they're, the Democrats, that's the only thing they're opposing Trump on is character. So there you go. Okay, so anybody want to say something about that? Well, I think it's it's it it shows two things. One, just how how blundering the DNC is, but I think they're allowed to be this dumb and it maybe even encouraged to be this dumb <clears throat> because now all of this time is wasted. Like we you, yes. you talked about it on your show, I talked about it on my show. You know, last week 219 Democrats reauthorized the Patriot Act. So this is just more theater to keep everyone distracted. This is just like some sort of who did you see what happened on the Bachelorette last night? They this is That's what this is. This is what this is. Somebody stole Tom Brady's jersey. The refs cheated in the NBA finals. It's all nonsense to keep us distracted from what's really going on. Which is we have a surveillance state. We <laughs> we have we live in a surveillance state and we're in permanent war. Yes. All right, so this isn't one of the better parts. But did you guys hear Nancy Pelosi earlier talking about how she doesn't hate people? <laughs> Weren't you inspired? <laughs> uh, is this so, the same Nancy Pelosi that AOC out fundraised without taking any corporate money? Is that the same? Yeah, one? and oh. she doesn't hate her for it. Oh, good. Doesn't hate. Oh, her. I got. You know, I didn't see that video. I saw the headline. I didn't watch it. Did you watch that? Video? Oh yeah. It's All great. right, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, so here, and here is her, and here is her testimony. So now I want to, I'm going to play this for you and I'm going to tell you exactly what's wrong with this. The intelligence committee heard testimony about how it, it, it isn't just our national interest in protecting our own elections. It's not just our national interest in making sure that the Ukraine remains strong and on the front line. So they fight the Russians there and we don't have to fight them here. 
but it's also our national interest in promoting democracy worldwide. And if we look hypocritical about this, if we look like we're asking other countries to interfere in our election, if we look like we're asking other countries to engage in criminal investigations of our, of our president's political opponents, then we're not doing our job of promoting our national interest in being that shining city on a hill. Okay, now let me just <clears throat> remind you why she's there. She's there as a law professor, constitutional scholar, who's there to tell us about impeachment and, and the ins and outs of impeachment constitutionally. That's what she's there for. And what she just did was opine on foreign policy that she likes against foreign policy she dislikes. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to break it down for you. Here we the go. Intelligence Committee heard testimony about how it, it, it isn't just our national interest in protecting our own elections. It's not just our national interest in making sure that the Ukraine remains strong and on the front line so they fight the Russians there and we don't have to fight them here. I don't, did you just hear what she said? She said... The reason why we're giving military aid to Ukraine, she said the Ukraine, it's just Ukraine, she's wrong about that, is so they fight the Russians over there and we don't have to fight the Russians in the United States. That's what their star witness just said. The reason why we're giving military aid to Ukraine is so they can fight Russia for us and we don't have to fight Russia over here. What the hell does... First of all, that's incorrect. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, we're not at war with Russia? <laughs> <laughs> I thought... Well, then you would could just stop there, too. Isn't she supposed to be an... Uh, uh, a professional about the Constitution, know the ins and outs yes. about the Constitution. At some point, don't you think she would even talk about that we've never even declared war and a part of our Constitution? <laughs> would say would say that all these wars we're in are unconstitutional and every president has committed a war crime? Yeah, I guess she would. She, but she's not saying that. She has a very narrow focus here. And did you want to say something? Ron? Well, I like how she goes on about promoting democracy around the world. The idea of us promoting democracy around the world, that's like somebody who just learned their first three chords offering guitar lessons. <laughs> like It's like we have no business. Also, too, what's happening in the Ukraine, they're in the middle of a civil war. And as any civil wars, they're very complex. Very complex, There's Graham. Very... In fact, Barack Obama, as you know, Graham, didn't give the aid to Ukraine to go fight Russia. Obama didn't. And she's making it out like this is obvious to everybody. It wasn't obvious to Barack Obama because Barack Obama didn't want to give military aid to Ukraine. In fact, didn't. Right. I bet you this is I bet you during the Bush administration, she was screaming about we don't want Iraq to become another Vietnam. <laughs> I bet you we could find that footage. Yep, I know I, bet it. You. I know I can because I know how a dumb neoliberal thinks and I know the stupid their th dumb thought patterns. So mm -hmm. She's saying this. I know it's I know it's true. So so there she is. First of all, she's making a pronouncement about public uh, about foreign policy. That's very controversial. And and the the side she's taking, she's taking the intelligence community side in this argument, which Barack Obama went against. And she's presented it as incontrovertible fact. It's not even her area of expertise. She's not even supposed to be talking about this stuff. But here she is giving her opinion on foreign policy, which is, goes way, way beyond her purview. And she's pushing foreign policy partisan foreign policy positions as if they're fact and they're not. She's making this up. She says we have to give aid to Ukraine or else we're going to have to fight Russia here in the United States. This is their expert. This is their, ex by the way, you saw her on TV, right? Did you, have you seen anyone else do, do this dissection of her stupid commentary <laughs> besides probably Aaron Mate, which is, I saw him do this. Anybody else? Okay, here we go. But it's also our national interest in promoting democracy worldwide. And if we look hypocritical about it, it's in our interest of promoting democracy worldwide. What? Okay. Uh, 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 hey, again, also, um, can you tell me where babies come from? <laughs> We're promoting democracy. World. This goes against our interest of promoting. When was the last time we promoted democracy worldwide? What we promote worldwide is the coups and overthrowing of democratically elected governments so we can put in strong men who are going to give us their oil. 
That's what we do. So this little fantasy woman here is definitely uh, not helping the Democrats case. What she's doing is pushing a partisan foreign policy line and acting like that has something to do with impeachment. Way out. Of, again, she's a partisan. She's uh, publicly disparaged Trump and the conservatives. And she's way over her skis on this. Completely full of it. And here, let's ask what she says. This. If we look like we're asking other countries to interfere in our election, if we look like we're asking other countries to engage in criminal investigations of our, of our president's political opponents, then we're not doing our job of promoting our national interest in being that shining city on a hill. So I didn't know that's why she was here to let us know what our national interests were or what our jobs were to promote our national interests or even what because we don't agree on what our natural natural national interests are. Professor. Barack Obama didn't agree with you. Barack Obama didn't think we should send Ukraine military aid. Barack Obama disagreed with you, law professor. Who's saying she knows what's in our national interests. You don't know. You do not know that. That's your opinion. And by the way, you weren't brought to Congress to give your opinion on that, on foreign policy. You were there to talk about constitutional rationale for impeachment. So, again, Democrats, horrible. This is your star. This is your star. Again, here, and, and this guy, this guy who, remember, who's got, who, you could see him being dropped off at summer camp. This guy who also says Trump should be impeached and all that, uh... He also said right after a couple of months after Trump was sworn in that Trump could be impeached over his fake news a a accusations. That's from Quartz. Bloomberg uh, Mar-a-Lago ad belongs in impeachment file. That's from him in uh, April of 2017. He, so he's believed that Trump should be impeached a long time. Here's another one. Trump's wiretap tweets raise tweets raise risk of impeachment. Same guy. So he's been saying this for a while. So that's that's two out of their three. One's a complete partisan talking out of her ass about foreign policy, pretending that this impeachment is over on a foreign policy squabble. Which is what it is, actually. Uh, so because Trump dared to go against the intelligence community, Trump dared to put to put a hold on military aid to Ukraine. That's what this is about. Uh any any other opinions, Mike? Well, it's so funny. She's <laughs> she's like spreading democracy uh, the way Obama just spread it with drone strikes throughout the Middle East. What democracy? How? Right. What is she talking about? Where is this democracy? Is it the fact that we outspend the next ten countries combined on on military? It's just it's just ridiculous to listen to this. Well, it's like she uh, when she was saying that we're supposed to be the shining city. On the hill or something like that. To me, yeah. it was like, what the hell? Shining city. That was was that our goal? Like you were talking about, like sh we're imperialists, but we're really nice imperialists, <laughs> yeah. right? We're the, benevolent. The, the shining city is a place where all the liberals live in clusters, <laughs> and then the conservatives mm. are all spread out. Yeah, and the liberals' yeah. parents pay for them to go to college, and that's why they're better than the spread out conservatives. And if you see a Trump hotel, you cross the street in a cluster. <laughs> in a that's cluster. What you do. Back. That's what you do. Yeah, that's what you do, Ron. In a cluster. <laughs> so, um, that again, this I can do this. This isn't hard to do, what I'm doing. Uh, apparently, it's too hard for MSNBC, CNN, ABC, at, at New York Times, Washington Post. This is too hard for them to do. You know who can do this? Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson. That's right. They're doing better coverage on the impeachment than anybody else in mainstream news. Isn't that something? Tucker Carlson doing better coverage of Syria than anybody else in mainstream news. Better coverage of Venezuela than anybody else in mainstream news. Why? And you guys aren't embarrassed that guys like me and Tucker Carlson are beating you every day. You're not that doesn't embarrass you. You should be. Of course, it doesn't embarrass you because you're paid thirty thousand dollars a day to not be embarrassed. Come see our live show. We're going to be in Honolulu on December 27th. We'll be in 
Portland, Oregon, and then we go to Tempe, Arizona, San Jose, California, Sacramento, Miami. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our live shows coming to a town near you and become a patron or support the Jimmy Dore Show. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com. Become a premium member. Thanks for your support.